At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming one of our facilitators that teaches yoga and breath work with us, Aubrey uh, Grayway. And now she's not only a, a yoga teacher and breath work facilitator, she's also a joy enthusiast, <laughs> enthusiast and a lover of life. And she studied human design. And today we're going to be kind of talking about human design, but as well as what I think a lot of people might struggle with when they really have this, this enthusiasm is how hard it is to pick that niche and that one or two things that really is what you want to put your focus energy on. And I mean, I think I have this problem, like I'm always doing a million different things. I mean, the people here will be like, ah, you're too all over the place, you know? And then, but as a byproduct, then I feel like I sometimes don't get a lot of movement in any one of those areas, right? So I want to hear a little bit about you going through that mm -hmm. as well as, you know, of course, we'll dive into human design. And then I know that you took a leap about a year ago, mm -hmm. jumping off the cliff and saying, let's let me follow this path fully. So welcome. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be here today with you. Excited to have <laughs> you. Um, so, Aubrey, do you want to share a little bit about, you know, maybe I, I like to say, like, how, how did you get on this journey, right? You know, and where was it for you? When did it start? And then what what caused you to take it from starting to actually saying, I want to do this as work, right? You know, because most of the time, you will start with an interest of it. They're yes. doing it for some reason. And then, but how did you get to being a facilitator? Yeah, um, I would say that, <clears throat> like, almost every experience in my life has really led me here. Um, but ultimately, I went into teaching, I went into elementary education, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> knowing that I wanted to help people. Okay. Ultimately, like growing up, you know, when you're a kid, you're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And there was never, I could never pick one thing. I would kind of bounce around. But ultimately, it always came back to, I know I want to help people. Hmm. But I couldn't pick like one job in helping people that really spoke to me. So, you know, I went to college, I did the whole college thing. I bounced around from, you know, major to major, you know, <laughs> mostly in those like helping fields with, you know, social work, psychology, a little bit in like the sciences. And it was just like crossing things off of a list until it kind of got to the point where I had tried like everything that I was semi interested in. And so I had been working as a summer camp counselor in mm -hmm. between the summers when I was going to school and I was working with military children. Oh, wow. And that really sparked, that like totally activated something within me um, because I was helping people, but also I have such like a deep love for children. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I thought, okay, well I love kids. I know I wanna help people. I'll do elementary education. Okay. And I had some friends in the program and, you know, it seemed like they were having a lot of fun. The classes were more engaging than, you know, some yeah. of your more traditional college classes. So I got into the program, I did that. And as I was doing it, it felt right. But in like intuitively, this was before, you know, I'd even had any sort of like spiritual awakening. I had just this intuitive gut knowing that it was gonna be like three to five years for me. I do this job, I do this for three to five years, and then I, there's something new out there for me. Mm. So <laughs> I, I'm from Iowa, so I went to school out there, and then you know, upon graduating, I had spent a summer in San Diego working with the military, doing the summer camp with kids, and so I just knew, all right, I'm moving to California after graduation, <laughs> I'm getting a job, I'm teaching there, you know, it just like felt really good in my soul. So I moved out here, I did the teaching thing, and I absolutely loved it. I had such a wonderful experience, you know, with the kids and the families and my coworkers. But after every single year, it was just like, mm, okay, do I go back next year? Mm. Um, and it wasn't anything, you know, in particular that I didn't like. But I, you know, as you know, that three-year mark continued to get closer and closer. 
Um, you know, there's just so many things within the education system that as I began to, you know, find myself more and more, that just felt more and more, a little bit morally wrong, you know? Yeah. Even the littlest things like the food that they feed the kids, you know? Like, I knew the food that they gave the kids at lunches, you know, it wasn't the healthiest, but... And I tried to do, you know, what I could while still being very respectful of boundaries, but it, it kind of... It got to the point where I felt like, you know, I've poured my heart into this job. I was so burnt out and exhausted after yeah. that third year um, for a variety of reasons. And so, you know, after that third year, I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's time for me to find something new. And really at that point, I had no plan. No wow. plan at all. And this was over a year ago. And... You know, it took months of me coming back to myself. You know, I did a lot of hiking. I spent a lot of time in nature. I've always felt very connected to the earth. I'm a double Taurus, so I have okay. that, like, just that like, deep desire to be outside. And, you know, slowly I was able to, you know, wipe away just a lot of the burden and stress that that job caused me and you know, be able to find myself again. And then I was able to start you know, working. I've just, ever since then, I've done a lot of part-time work here and there. Mm -hmm. And then just like every other big decision I've made in my life, it's just been this immediate like, okay, this is what I'm doing and there's like no looking back, there's no talking me out of this. So I just had this like gut instinct like, okay, I'm gonna become a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. At this point, I had already been a breathwork facilitator. Okay, so what, what got you into breathwork? And I mean, were you, you know, in the Midwest, yoga, breathwork, those kind of things yeah. aren't that popular. <laughs> so was it, where, where was your first, like, introduction to that as even as just, a, you know, mm -hmm. a client, right? When, yeah. You know, and what was that first experience that, you know, because I, I mean, I remember my first breathwork <laughs> thing, and I was like, what the heck is going on with my hands? <laughs> this is crazy. I felt my heart explode. And I was like, there's something to this right absolutely oh my goodness um so my mom actually introduced me to yoga when I was oh. in high school like okay she my mom is also a yoga teacher my okay. young my I'm the oldest but my like middle sister uh -huh. she's also a yoga teacher too um so I so had, it was in your family so you grew up around yeah this, I grew yeah. up around it but I would say it was more of a physical practice for me and then you know the mental and the emotional came along but the breath work was the catalyst ah. for the spiritual. That was really the ultimate activation for me. And I was living, the first time that I did breath work, um, my sister introduced breath work to me. Um, she's been like my, also one of my biggest inspirations and you know, spiritual catalysts in life as well, yeah. which I'm super grateful for. Um, but there was a studio in Venice that it's sadly no longer open anymore, but she had been going to, and she was like, you have to come with me. And she tried to explain it to me. And you know, like, you know, you've done it. Yeah. You can explain it all you want, but until you experience it, you do not, you can't comprehend the magic behind it. Oh yeah. No, especially <laughs> people like, oh yeah, it's breath work. You're doing some breathing. And then like for somebody like me that had done so much different meditations and other different things, you know, and I think like the first time I did breath work, I must have already had own Liberate Emporium for maybe like eight years. So, I okay, mean, like, it wow. wasn't like I was around the block to spiritual yeah. things, you know? Like, yeah. But, um, I mean, it would have been this most similar to, like, some kundalini yoga classes where you're doing a ha, 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 mm -hmm. you know, like, and you have that, like, tetany to happen. Yeah. But there was something different about it, right? And I was like, ooh, mind blown. And it was, like, at a time when I really needed it. But it Absolutely. was like, you can't explain it. You're doing this double inhale out <laughs> and you're having this like feeling like you just did shrooms yeah, like, like how does that happen where does that come from <laughs> I know um yeah so I finally went to class with her and I mean like I said that totally activated something within me I had been really struggling with meditation and just overall being able to slow down. Mm -hmm. I have done things so fast my whole life from like riding a bike to taking a test to like you know, exercise. Like I just want to do it fast and then be done with it and move on to something new. Yeah. And breath work allowed me to slow down the mind. It allowed me to fully reset my body. And now I have found meditation. You know, now I can sit down 
-hmm. and I can connect. Yeah. So it's the like gifts it's that like it's brought it, me. It's like it opened that channel to be yes. a little bit more. It's like, you know, it's like a muscle, right? You know, mm -hmm. if somebody that's like never ran before and then they run and then like it, walking becomes easier at that point, right? You know, so Absolutely. it's like it's like you, you <laughs> ran a marathon with the breath work and then you can meditate easier and find that stillness. Yeah. Okay, so you, you take this class in Venice. It... You know, you have this intense experience, right? Mm -hmm. Right, with Absolutely. your first first class, and <laughs> and you know, your sister is bringing you. You you have this experience, and then you decide at that point, like, I need to learn this, or did you just keep on going as like you know, a, like a customer for a little bit mm -hmm. as a client, and then you know, when when was it like I need to learn to be a facilitator? Yeah, so I did just continue going to classes for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and had so many incredible experiences. And that was in 2019. So then 2020 happened and you know everything was shut down. And at this time I was living in a small studio with my sister uh -huh. in Venice. And so it was her and I in this it, it, small, small space together. With inability <laughs> to leave and even go to the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> oh. So um, I mean, I know everyone had their own experience during that time and there was, there's still a lot of trauma from it. Um, ultimately though, like my experience and, you know, being with her of all people, it was super activating. Yeah. Um, so I did breath work like almost every single day. Wow. I had like a list of things. It was like your celery juice, your breath yeah. work, like get sunshine, you know, all of those good that, things. That was, like, was like me during the <laughs> pandemic. It was like, I did breath work for, it was, it was between probably like 70 to 90 days straight hiking <laughs> every day for three months and doing celery juice uh -huh. every morning. Like I feel like kindred souls there. I was like, all right, yes. medical medium, here we come. So we got really healthy during that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, so then, um, yeah, I was teaching online and I still had, you know, like time on my hands at this point. And my sister had decided to become a cacao ceremonialist. Uh -huh. And, you know, we just, we love all, you know, all of the spiritual things. We love dabbling. And so we just kind of started like teaching and hosting virtual events for friends and family. And then people would like, you know, bring other people. So it was all online. And I had done the breath work. I led the breath work for a few sessions. And then after that, it's like, why don't I just get certified online right now? You know, because I had put my money towards going on a trip during spring break that didn't happen. So yeah. it's like, I'm going to take this money. I'm going to invest in myself right now. Beautiful. So yeah, that's kind of where the the facilitator, the certification came from. Okay, and then <laughs> and then the yoga came in. You know, you said okay, you just felt like this calling inside and said, let me, I need to take a teacher's training for yoga. Yeah, and it's it's interesting, like how like without even fully realizing, and to some extent, you probably do now. It, mm -hmm. it was trusting and listening to that guidance that was guiding you you know absolutely and and that ability and i'm sure that even even through your smorgasbord of different classes and studying when you were in college like some of those particulars that you decided to take mm -hmm. you know all kind of melded together and be like okay well, that one sociology class and then we we're talking about this and the constructs of society and the impact or this of psychology class and this and that and you mm -hmm. kind of all bring it together right absolutely and, and it's like even though it wasn't that directive to have you have this one kind of study this like sampling created that right you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important for people to hear because oftentimes we feel that we waste our time if we don't like put our energy into a certain thing or we shift over time and we say, oh, we did this for three years and then we decided to get a different career. We did this for a certain time and then we did this. And, and it's, it's almost like they feel like they wasted time. Right. But they didn't, you know, how much, yeah. how much growth it's like if a relationship ends like in a loving relationship, like an intimacy, mm -hmm. it doesn't take away the fact that you had one year, two year, three year, 10 years of good times. Right. It doesn't take away the memories. Right. Absolutely. And, but people do that for life. And I and I wish that was one of the things that people could like kind of start to shift because it's like these are our experiences. These are the pages that make mm -hmm. up our book. Right. And it's like if this is our story. So 
if that was impactful and there's many good experiences and I get sometimes the, the negative start outweighing the positive and that's when we make a change in our life, right? That's when we say, yes. okay, time for something new. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, the bureaucracy of the school system, maybe the teaching online, maybe the things, maybe for that, okay, I don't even want to make it the five years. This is done after this time, yep. you know, <laughs> I'm ready to be done, right? Mm -hmm. And but does it take away all of the beautiful moments and, and knowledge that you got or the impact or the impact on people had or those kids had on you? Absolutely not, right? Yeah, it, like I still, I still think about those kids like almost daily and all that, you know, I was the teacher, but I think at the end of the day, they probably taught me just as much, if not more than I was able to teach them. Mm -hmm. And so I will never regret that experience or really any experience that I've had because I think of it as like building blocks. Yeah. I'm walking up this ladder. I don't always know where I'm going. And you know, sometimes I take a step down and that's okay. But like you said, every experience is, it's yeah. so powerful. But it's like, if, if you think about it like a ladder, and I just thought about like, you know, seeing a ladder literally in front, you know, sometimes people think about, yo, I'm walking backwards, or I'm taking a step down. And I like that metaphor, because if you think about like a ladder, let's say you're climbing up a ladder, and you get to a certain point, and you're limited in where you can go and what you can reach in that point, because you're, you know, 20 stairs up and this is this, you know, if mm -hmm. it's on the side of the building. If you want to reach a different destination, if you want to have a different, you know, reach, you literally have to walk down the ladder and move it. Absolutely. You know, yes. Like, you know, so <laughs> like, it's okay that sometimes stepping what is perceived as backwards is just readjusting. So then we can take it and say, okay, this was on the north facing wall. Now we're moving it on the mm -hmm. east facing wall. Well, it's a completely different, you know, yeah. And and when we do that and we say, okay, and sometimes we have to go back or it's like if you're you're driving and you realize you went as far as you could in a certain direction and then you have to kind of turn back to take a different road, do you consider that backtracking or do you consider that progress, right? You yeah. know, it's perspective shift. For sure. And just like bouncing off of that, I had this incredible download a couple weeks ago and it was about you know this time period in my life mm. and I have been trying to like put a name on it because that's what we like to do we yeah. like to you know put names to things to help us understand them and you know we think of like oh a crossroads and even just thinking about a crossroads in life you know when I think about a crossroads and I'm standing in the middle I see that there's really only technically four ways to go yeah and that's not true there are an infinite there, there, it's it's infinite. And you know, I've even described this as like a void, which is someone corrected me immediately because they're like, what do you think of when you think of a void? It's like blackness and nothingness. Mm. So I was hiking the other day and I just happened to be the only person on the trail, which is rare, <laughs> you know, being yeah. out in LA. And I saw like, it was just, I felt like I was in the back country, you know, I did not see anything man-made, you know, at least at the very start of my hike. And it just hit me like, this is where I'm at in life. I am, you know, it's almost like I'm in the back country, you know, I'm in the wilderness and there's not a, there's not a pavement. There's, you know, not a hiking trail per se even, or there is, but it's going so many different ways. Yeah. And I can decide what corner I want to turn around. And, you know, around that corner, I might, you know, pick up my sister and we might hike for a while, mm. you know, along the way. And now around the next bend, I might see this incredible waterfall that, you know, inspires me to, you know, go this way now. And I also, you know, I might also just like sit down and chill in my hammock for a few days. Mm. And so it really helped me kind of almost beautify this place that I'm at in life because when we're in these places, and especially when it lasts over a year, mm -hmm. where, I mean, I've made so much progress. I've learned so much. But at the same time, you know, there's this expectation, like, yeah. what's next? What's next? Um, so thinking about this place that I'm at in my life as just exploring the backcountry and, you know, learning from the little critters or the trees or whatever it is along the way. It really helped me appre like just find this yeah. deep appreciation for where I'm at. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button.
and one, you know, the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. Well, absolutely. And, the, and that ability, and it sounds like within that, the ability to know that you're at control. Mm-hmm. Right? Because yes. a lot of times when people are in on certain times, they let go of their ability to have control. Right. Mm -hmm. They they say, oh, well, that I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen and I, this and this and that. And so then they suddenly don't realize that they get a pick whether they go around the right corner or whether they sit there for a few moments or whether they enjoy the waterfall or whether they pick up a friend along the way and go mm -hmm. down a few feet. They, they forget that there there's a willingness and this ability for them to be a navigator in their life, that even in any given chance, you have the moment. And then, mm -hmm. and then like, as you said, like embracing it, like yeah. when we look back so many times, you know, you're in this transitional period in, in life. And I think a lot of our viewers that are listening are also in a transition. It might look different. It might be this, you know, maybe they're getting out of a relationship. Maybe they're taking a step into starting a business. Maybe they're deciding mm -hmm. whether to go back to school. Maybe they're considering moving to a different state. Maybe they're whatever the case is, is like, there is this shift, right? And, you know, in, in all honesty, we're always in a shift, but mm -hmm. there's more major shifts going on. But oftentimes we want to so quickly, like you said, get to the, where we think our destination is that we don't value the beauty of the experience, right? And, and this is kind of common when people look at, let's say, chapters in their life, right? Mm -hmm. so people look back and say, man, when I was a kid and I had no worries, right? You know, but the kid is thinking about, oh, I can't wait until I, I can be old enough to drive. And then the person that's old enough to drive can't wait until they're off to college. And the person that's off to college can't wait to start their career, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, but like, if you look at those chapters, like if you could have just embraced them a little bit more, if you could have said, you know, the next one's coming, right? Yes, the, 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 something's happening. If the, you're single right now, you will be in a relationship. So how do you, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like you're going to be single forever. Or if you're in a relationship, maybe if it's not, you know, there, whatever, right? Yeah. There, there's going to be change. And how do you embrace the now and find the beauty in it? Because tomorrow may be different. Yes. And definitely a few days down the line will be different. And then you're going to mm -hmm. look back and be like, oh, remember when I had that year that I could just like kind of decide whether I wanted to sit for a few days or hike or do this or to dive into these new studies or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's going to be a time when you say, man, I'm so busy doing all these other things that I forgot about that time, but I couldn't wait to be doing all of these other things <laughs> that I didn't even embrace that time. Yes. And my mom is really good at reminding me of that too. Yeah. You know, it when we're always looking to the next, we're, we're taking ourselves out of the present moment, you know, and it, that builds anxiety yeah. when, you know, we're always, we have our, you know, blinders on and we're looking forward. So yeah, I've just, I've been having a lot of fun. I love that, you know, every day can be different because I'm, I work better when I'm, you know, not in a routine and a little bit more inconsistent. And um, what do you have to give for people as, as a vice of looking at like, it, other people that might operate largely on you that is like you that has so many things that are of your interest and mm -hmm. so and can find that beauty in life but is is finding it hard to figure out where to kind of put some of their focus yeah I would say ultimately you know starting to like tie in to human design and oh yeah, you know, yeah. all that, about that stuff too. I would say ultimately like A, it's okay. Give yourself permission to explore because you never know what you're going to learn and what is going to be activated inside of you when you start exploring something. Hmm. And that might not be the end all be all, but maybe you needed to learn something in that area or, you know, that was the activation that you needed to, you know, propel you in a different direction. So definitely like first, give yourself permission. It is okay. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, you know, starting to tie into the human design, knowing that we all operate in our own unique way. Mm -hmm. So within human design, it is essentially for people who don't know, it is equal parts science and spirituality. Okay. And it is essentially your blueprint. It is your soul. It is 
you know, your unique gifts and talents and what you came here to do on this earth. And so really get to know yourself. Because when I first learned about human design, I did not know myself and I thought I was going to be, you know, something completely different than I was. Um, but again, going Isn't back that to the case, though, I mean, most people, I mean, we go yeah. and we're brought up in society and we're like, we're taught different ways. And maybe mm -hmm. that's partly the education system. Yeah. That's partly the society. That's these norms. And we lose ourselves or mm -hmm. we we rather don't get to explore who we truly are and we think we use so much of our cognitive cognitive mind and say well this is what i should do or this is what i shouldn't do or this is what's appropriate or this is what's not and somewhere between one kind of consideration and the next we lose ourselves yes and we think that we have a version of ourselves that we know but it's only what we've allowed and not necessarily our truth mm-hmm yeah, 100%. Um, so there are like five main energy types, and that's kind of the energy types are kind of the umbrella of human design. There's so this so would much be like would this it. be like close to like kind of a different version uh, for those that don't know anything mm -hmm. about human design since it's not as popularly talked about. Would that be something that would be uh, you know? in relation, like something like astrology, but you know, so you have your different signs. He's talked about being a double Taurus, you know, yeah. so like, you know, so this is another way of looking at your blueprint in a way. Yes, absolutely. And it takes, you know, some uh, philosophy from like astrology, but also, you know, Kabbalah, some of the Vedic teachings. It's kind of like a mishmash of okay. a lot of stuff. So it, it's a very holistic way of looking at yourself. Um, and the energy types, though, are kind of like the umbrella of that. And so first we have our generators who are here to, you know, they enter, they, they find something that they love mm -hmm. and they put their energy towards it. And that is how they create life force energy. Essentially, that's how our, you know, society operates. That's how yeah. we continue to spin is, you know, 70% of people here on this earth are generators. Okay. Um, but... When generators put their energy towards, you know, maybe a job or something that they don't love, that's not as helpful and they're not, you know, as in alignment and creating that energy that they need to to continue to stimulate themselves and ultimately that the rest of the world needs to. Um, so we do have our generators okay. and then we have our manifestors who are about like 9 to 10% of the population. Okay. And they are here as the creators. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they have a very powerful ability to manifest and, you know, when they have these ideas, they can start them, but they don't necessarily have to finish them. It can then be the generators who come in and kind of do Empower that. Them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then to combine the two, we have manifesting generators who, you know, it's taking those two energy types and putting them together. And so they are the doers, but also the creators. Okay. And they are also super multifaceted. So going back to, you know, when you mentioned like, do you have a recommendation for people who are all over the place and want to do everything? Um, manifesting generators, that's actually what they should be doing. Okay. When they are in alignment, they are, you know, maybe working a nine to five and they have a couple part-time jobs and some hobbies. So, you know, like I said, know yourself, know your design, because that might be the permission that you yeah. need to, like, to do hey, it. And like, also, they have the energy to do that. They yeah. are, you know, energy beings, just like, like the generators, manifesting generators and manifestors. They all create their own energy by mm -hmm. doing what they love and by being in alignment. And you said there was five. So which one are yes. we missing? <laughs> <laughs> so projectors, and I'm a projector. Okay. And we're about 20% of the population. So we are more so the seers. Okay. And we're here to like guide and teach and heal. So, you know, some of those more like nurturing kind of professions are usually good for projectors. And we are non-energy beings, meaning that we get our energy from, you know, the outside world and from other people. Mm, that's where your Taurus <laughs> energy comes in yeah. and you're hiking and you're like, <laughs> suck it all in. Yes. Um, and then reflectors who are about 1% or even less of the population. So they're super rare and they're the mirrors of society. So mm. they're such beautiful beings, especially when they're in alignment because they really reflect back to you, you know, what's going on with yourself and what you need. Nice. And that's only 1%. So that's the rarest. Yes. It's very rare. Yeah. And, um, how do you know when you come across a reflector? <laughs> 
Um, that's a great question. I've only actually met one in person. Oh, really? And yeah, I always thought he's my my boyfriend's friend. I always thought like he was a really cool person, and then I learned that he was a reflector. It's like, wow, you know, that's really cool because <laughs> you're mirroring back to me, you know, what I see in myself or something like that. Like they're just they're really cool people, and they can because they take on other people's energy. They can kind of almost become like chameleons in okay. a way where they kind of morph to the energy in the room. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of a little like telltale that someone is a reflector as well. Okay, so they can morph, <laughs> they can do that. So you yeah. have like the most common being these generators. Yes, and the, the manifesting generator falls within that 70% as well. Okay, and then, and then you have the manifestors being like the... And then you have the manifestors being a little bit less common, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you have the projectors sure. and the manifestors are both a little less common. Yeah. And then the most uncommon is the reflector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like I would totally say, you know, if you've never looked up your energy type before, this is like such a brief introduction right here. But definitely look it up because... I thought I totally thought I was a generator because I was just go, 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 go. Um, but like I said, I didn't know myself. I didn't know that, you know, projectors actually need a lot of downtime. We need a lot of rest. We need to be alone because we're not energy beings. We take on a lot of other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, also shed that, you know, so... Oh, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> and, you, and you use this in like, you know, when you're working with people and you're mm -hmm. understanding and, and um, you know, like share with me about like when you realized that you were actually somebody different than what you would thought to be, how you use that and integrated that to help you. Yeah. So um, something that for the longest time really bothered me was that I didn't feel like I was heard when I was speaking okay. or like I didn't feel fully seen for who I was. And I remember like having a phone call with my mom literally in tears because there were just so many situations that piled up where I would say something uh -huh. and then like some like no one really cared. And then, you know, the next moment someone else says the same thing and it's like, wow. Um, so with being a projector, the big thing is that we have to wait for the invitation. Mm. And I was not waiting for my invitation to share. And it can definitely be a challenge because we have to be invited into someone's space in order to really share our energy because we have a very penetrative aura. Ah. And so because we're seers, we just naturally see people quite deeply and we see situations and systems very deeply. And if someone has not seen their self that deeply, it can be uncomfortable and it yeah. can kind of be like repulsive. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think just looking back on, you know, some of the situations where I was, you know, trying to give advice or mm -hmm. share that, you know. Um, what you were coming in and you were seeing so <laughs> clearly, but then they were like, I'm not ready for this or I didn't ask for this or I didn't. Yes, yeah. it can be a little too much, which, you know, I understand and I respect. And so, yeah, just... I've learned, you know, really to just become a really good listener. Mm -hmm. And if I want to be heard, if, you know, if I want my voice to be heard, I need to hear everyone just as deeply as I want to be heard. So, you know, that, that's been a whole lesson for me, too. And, you know, it, it even ties into my human design is just like how that. can I listen better? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And where do you see, you know, like I know you're in this navigation part and a lot of people are listening and that they're in this flow too. Mm -hmm. But you've really taken that leap. You've allowed yourself to say, okay, I'm, I've always known that I wanted to help people. Yes. And there's been different avenues, but you're kind of like jumping down this one and listening and trusting mm -hmm. what has been guided to you, right? You know, yeah. and saying, okay, I want to take the certification or I want to take this training and, and you've done it and now mm -hmm. you're teaching. And how has that experience been for you? It's been really incredible. Um, something else that I didn't know about myself was that I think I have always come across as mo a more confident person than I really was. Mm. And so, um, you know, I was really confident around kids and teaching kids, 
but coming into a space where like I used to go into yoga classes and breathwork classes and like glorify the instructor like wow this person is so wise they're so lucky they mm -hmm. get to share you know their life like I just I really looked up to them and I you know I have dealt with that imposter syndrome a little bit and so you know I think as of lately I have been a lot more comfortable using my voice and realizing that, you know, I have just as much experience. I am just as wise. I am just as, you know, special and unique as any mm. other person. So, you know, I've really learned to kind of, you know, we're all, we're all on, a, you know, an even playing field. I don't, I don't see yeah. any one person as higher or lower than the other. And so I had to really, you know, see that for myself too. And so you know, teaching yoga and, you know, working with adults as well and being an inspiration for yeah. people who are my age or even older, it's really helped me with, like, I've been working on my solar plexus chakra okay. a lot. <laughs> so working with, you know, my personal power, my confidence, and then also, you know, with my voice and with speaking my truth and expressing myself. So I would say those are the two biggest blessings right now. Oh, no, I love that. And it's so true. I mean, we all have, you know, just like when you said, when you were teaching, you don't know whether you learned more from your students or whether mm -hmm. uh, they learned more from you, right? And that's with everything, you know, we don't know what what lessons or what teachings or what impact we're bringing, but if we trust like that everything is happening for us and no matter whether you're a patron or whether you're in the room or whether you're facilitating and that there's this ripple effect, then it's okay, you know, you, you know, there's different, you know, levels of development and different levels of learnings and different times for different things at different times, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, yeah, you know, even if somebody's been doing something for 20 years and has a little bit deeper of understanding of this or this or that, that's great. And that might be effective during a certain period, yeah. but that doesn't negate the way or what knowledge is said at that time and trusting that the right students are for you. And mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a, it, it's this level of trust, but this ability to believe and to know that you too have experiences to share and to teach, right? Yes. And I think that goes for anybody, no matter where you're at, to, to value, to value your life, your wisdom, your experiences, your choices, because at the end of the day, nobody's lived your journey. Absolutely. And when you really like break it down, I think of like my own unique human design, my astrology. I think of, you know, the DNA that I've inherited from my parents. I think of past lives that I've lived. Like when you really put all of that into perspective, mm -hmm. there really is no one like you. There's yeah. no one like me. No. Like we are so incredibly unique. And I think the more that you just get to know yourself and realize that, just the more confidence that you begin to you know gain and the more empowered you feel yeah and and, and, to, and to trust that 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 viewpoint and experience it, it, even if there's different ways to look at it that's yours you know 10 people can watch mm -hmm. a movie and you can all give a review on the movie right and you all had a different in interpretation different experience based on your filters and like it can be the same literal film Mm -hmm. the same scenes nothing changed but the person is different viewing it yes. and that's life so even if we go through quote unquote some of the most similar or the same things our interpretation our view what we get out of it is going to be different than mm -hmm. anybody else so our stories are vastly different not 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 in the essence of just yeah i mean our dna and this and that and all that other stuff and human yeah. design astrology but also your filter mm -hmm. right Yes, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And so having people trust in that more, having people like embrace that more. And then that, that's led you into discovering, you know, some some things that you're passionate about mm -hmm. leading you down. And where do you think that you're going from here? That's such a great question. And, you know, I really don't know. Great. Again, I feel I know not I feel but I know where I'm at right now. It is exactly where I've meant to. I am meant to be. And, you know, I've had like my Akashic Records read. I've, you know, worked with like an incredible psychic. And it really like, they've kind of confirmed for me that, you know what, like right now you really don't know. Mm. And that's actually okay. And 
I fully believe, you know, things, divine timing is a thing. Yeah. So maybe there is, you know, still something that I need to learn or someone that I need to meet or something that, you know, that next like activation needs to take place. But I think where I'm at right now is really beautiful. And I'm, you know, constantly reminding myself of that. And yeah, I, like I said, I know that, you know, there's still so much more for me to learn. And so I have no doubt that I will continue to just grow and expand my knowledge and my gifts and all of that. But yeah, ultimately, I just want to help people. <laughs> I love that. And I, and, I, and my hope in, is that more people can be into that space, that mm -hmm. it's okay exactly where you're at, you know, and the more that you have that authenticity of acceptance and allowing, because as you yeah. said, you have no doubt and you trust that, you know, things are changing. There's going to be more growth. There's going to be more people that you meet or more avenues that you go on. The future will look different than today. Mm -hmm. But the more that you can embrace it and the more that you can just be and enjoy, yes. right? Because I think that that's, that's the gift of it, right? Yeah. Is that you get to enjoy. I mean, you can tell with your smile, with your enthusiasm of life, is you're just like, this is fine, you know? I'm yeah. okay. I'm like, oh my goodness, this planet, it is so beautiful. Yeah. It is incredibly beautiful. And so, I don't know, like I am just, like I have chills right now just thinking about it. So the more that you really can just find that beauty in your everyday life and, you know, anchoring in and being aware of what you have and knowing that, yes, there is still more out there for you, but you are in such a beautiful place and you're exactly where you're meant to be. Yeah. And there'll always be more out there for you. You know, we're mm -hmm. always growing. We're always evolving. Yeah. Oh, well, Aubrey, <laughs> where can people find you? I know that you're here a couple days a week. You teach a breathwork class with us. You teach yoga class. But what yeah. about some social handles, ways to in, uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, um, right now, I the best place is my personal Instagram. I'm still working on my, you know, spiritual Instagram, but... My personal one, it's underscore, underscore, underscore. Okay, so three underscores. <laughs> Big on the underscores. And then AUB, A-U-B-G. Okay, perfect. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'll link that down below as well. But if there are people are listening to us on an Audible uh, platform, whether mm -hmm. Spotify or iTunes or one of those wonderful um, platforms, you know, I do suggest that you come and check out our YouTube because then you get to see us yeah. in person. <laughs> and then we also do something that we don't do in our regular podcast that on our YouTube, we do these shorter snippets. And so what we find is some of the best parts of this conversation. You can grab that, you can share that, allow other people to hear about this, to have that moment or two of inspiration that can maybe help shift somebody's day. That's what we're here for. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for joining today. Yes, thank you so much. And until next time, everybody, <laughs> have a beautiful day. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, you can do it. All right, until next time. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.